My topic is group policy managing Microsoft Edge or uh, Chromium Edge, and I'll touch a little bit on Legacy Edge. Uh, so my name is Chad Brower. I'm a system administrator at some insurance company. You can find me on Twitter, uh, Brower underscore Chad. Um, I do a little bit of scripting hey, there. Uh, so they're they're about to cover a topic that. It, ooh. <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, um, I got some certs. I'm not a Microsoft Survey professional or uh, MVP or anything like that, but uh, I do a lot of things within the community. I got about 10 years experience in IT. Um, I don't have a lot of hobbies because I have kids. Uh, they take up a lot of my time, but uh, when I do uh, have time, I like to autocross, um, but uh, currently it's too cold for that. So the agenda today, we're just gonna talk about the group policy basics. Um, and I'm going to kind of show you that. I know it's been shown uh, with Chrome and Donna touched on it a little bit, uh, so we won't spend too much time there. We're going to take a look at Legacy Edge, uh, demo that real quick, and security baselines, and followed by Q&A, and uh, have a bunch of links and references for all the information I'm going to cover and talk about today. So group policy basics. So basically, if you still are managing Legacy Edge inside your environment, and I don't know anyone that really would need to at this point, but the uh, the group policy template files are actually built into the um, operating system. Um, however, if you do have a domain controller, you do need to download, uh, I always like to download the latest policy files. Um, and the latest ones you can get right now, I believe are from October, 2020. Um, these do not include the Microsoft Edge policy files as Donna was showing you guys. You have to go to the Edge website and the link to that is actually uh, right here on the slide. Uh, but yeah, as leading to the Microsoft Edge or Chromium Edge, you have to import those. You can put them in your local policy store or your domain sysfall. So some of the some of the basics is like why what would you really want to set like when it comes to group policy and edge and uh, Don was talking about, you know, updates and the update branches and stuff. And there's a lot of, a lot of settings you can set for disabling updates and how and when um, you want those to come down, what versions, what channels and all that. Um, in our environment, we actually disable them because we deploy the edge updates via uh, software center, right? So we don't want the versions that go up, up and down, or up. Um, and we also disable Chrome updates for the same reason. We also push those through um, third-party updates. And we've kind of been burned in the past in our organization um, on this is there's a version of Chrome that comes out or Edge that comes out and there's a new feature that would break something that the um, you know, web development team needs to address before it's in our environment. So. One of the reasons why we stop the updates from going, I, we do control them um, with the updates, but we stop them so we have time to test and make sure the new versions coming out uh, are going to work with all of our uh, line of business apps. Uh, other things you might want to look at, disabling password saving, uh, force or disable add-ons, set your home page. And another really cool thing uh, I know was talked about in the Chrome presentation, but uh, since Edge is pretty much Google Chrome or on the Chromium platform, um, if you go to Edge uh, policy, you can see all the settings that you have set for your uh, current workstation, um, which is kind of cool. So a little bit of a demo. Help me with the demo gods, right? Like, uh, so Donna already went over this. However, uh, there's a lot of great information that Microsoft publishes on this. Um, and the link to this will be on in the slide deck that I have. But you want to configure Microsoft Edge policy settings. Uh, they have a nice little page that talks about it. Um, and they talk about uh, what the settings are. So you can click on these links and you can see all the settings you can apply and what they do. Uh, kind of what we're going to be talking about today is just really quickly um, where to go get the policy files. Um, so Donna showed you to show this to you. You go get your, your version that you have, platform, and then get your policy files. 
So instead of me, um, you know, downloading, <laughs> showing you, uh, I've already extracted all those already. Um, and I only import um, US English version. You could just do all of them, but um, this is what this is what it looks like. So in my environment, I just grabbed the U US English and all the templates. Um, and then those, uh, if you just do it on a local local level, uh, I don't know, it's hard to see this because uh, I don't have a Zoom feature, but you just go to the Windows policy definitions, and then you can just import those in here at a local level to play with them, or you can go to your domain sysfall and do the same thing. Um, and what ends, ha ends up happening is you get this nice little, these edge policy management things if you go to um, local group policy editor on your local system. Uh, just one real quick thing. Uh, I don't doubt you guys can see that, but this says allow the surf game. So um, if you don't want someone to play the surfing game in Edge, like Adam was showing you, you can turn that off. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> so back to our slides. One second. So, do you still need Legacy Edge? Uh, I certainly hope not, uh, because I believe it's being uh, deprecated in about a month or so from now. Um, so you won't get any support from Microsoft or updates to it, but um, obviously it'll probably still work. Uh, but if you're on any newer version of Windows 10 uh, and you apply updates, uh, pretty much Legacy Edge goes away and you don't see it anymore, even though it's still on the system. Um, but you might have a business reason or development reason to have Legacy Edge, uh, what they call side by side. Um, and you have to have, you don't have to have the policy templates to do this. You could do it through registry, but it makes it easier to deploy to users if you still use group policy um, to allow side by side. Um, funny story here uh, when I try to go back in uh, on my system, my demo system, I'm using. Like it, Legacy Edge wasn't there, and it's it's actually a, a bit of a pain to get Legacy Edge to come back because you have to uninstall the Edge update uh, that gets pushed down, uh, and then you got to reboot, and then you have to have, have the side by side policy in place or the registry in place, and then you can get the Legacy Edge, and then you can install Edge, the new Edge on top of it. So uh, what side by side is is basically you run the old Edge, Legacy Edge, and Chromium based Edge. Uh, on the same system. Uh, why would you want to do that? Um, well, for server set support, uh, they need both versions out there. So if there is a user that hasn't had the update or is on an older version of Windows 10 and they're using Edge as their primary browser, it's going to be helpful for your server set support to have that to support your end users. And the other reason is for my organization, devs need to be able to work with Legacy Edge and Microsoft Edge. So we have um, about a year ago, we had conversation about line of business apps and like what app worked best in what browser. And it was determined that some of the devs needed to have Legacy Edge to prove out that Legacy Edge wasn't better than Chromium Edge and for, for some of our line of business apps. I, I think that's since kind of been uh, proven out that I think believe everyone's either in Chrome or um, Chromium Edge right now. And uh, Edge is obviously going to be going away uh, in my organization at some point. So a little bit of a demo. So you can see um, I have Edge and Microsoft Edge installed in the same system. Uh, so it's really pretty neat. Uh, oops. Sorry about that, guys. That's the only thing that goes wrong throughout the demos. That's, that's best. All right, we're back. So I can access the legacy version of Edge um, by doing what I was, I was going to do, uh, the side-by-side -side experience. Um, and they talk about it on this page here, which is included in the slide deck. Uh, if you really wanted to see this work um, or needed it for some reason, um, but 
just kind of cool that you can run old edge and new edge and Chrome and all the other browsers all at the same time, basically, uh, if you had a legitimate business reason or development reason to do so. Oh, hold on a second. I wanted to show you guys. And um, my apologies. I know it's hard to see this. Control scroll in your Teams window if you need to zoom in for it uh, to see his screen. So you can see I have allow side by side set to one. Um, so that's how you get it. To, that's how you toggle the setting in uh, red, the registry, or you can use um, the same setting inside the group policy as well. Um, and I actually have this in my environment where it's uh, applied to uh, just a couple of uh, users that need it that have side by side installed. Um, and if you are on a later version of Windows 10, like I believe it's 1909, or I think all of them actually have the update for Edge. And so you're not going to see Legacy Edge. Um, but if you wanted to go back and do it, you'd have to uninstall the update and then reboot. And then uh, you'd have Legacy Edge back after the side by side. Uh, option was set, and then you can install Edge again, and you can both in the same experience. So pretty neat. Back to the slides. So one more thing I'm going to talk about is uh, security baselines, and um, pretty much an easy free solution to uh, leverage in your environment to get some added layer of security that's um, kind of adopted by the industry. Uh, basically, Microsoft has this toolkit called the Security Compliance Toolkit. And uh, they've been doing this, gosh, a couple, five years now. I'm not sure how long exactly. But um, so for every release of uh, Windows 10 there is, um, they will release a version of that system in a security baseline. And um, they have really good documentation. They're super easy to import and test for your environment. Um, they, they do follow CS or other regulatory requirements. Um, and they are backwards compatible. Uh, and they also support other, you know, so they have one for Edge, they have one for Microsoft 365, they have one for Windows servers. I believe they have IE in there as well. Um, so if you're looking to, you know, instead of reinventing the wheel or purchasing CIS baselines or any other baselines uh, or, or using NIST, um, this is an easy way to get in to have a security baseline. Um, and the documentation is really good because they, they show you what they're setting. They show you the differences between, so say, uh, they had one out there, I believe, for like version, let's just say, 87 of Edge. Um, and then they have an 88 version of Edge. And they'll show you the differences between the two uh, and what they're setting, uh, which is super neat. So I'm going to kind of show you that really quickly. So um, here's the web page. Talks about what they are really quickly how, and how you can get them. Um, and so basically, you just go um, to the download center. Uh, oh. You can go get them. And um, I, again, apologize uh, if you can't see this very well, but uh, so they have. Um, a final version of 20H2. They have version 88 for Edge, Office Pro Plus. Uh, they have older down-level versions of Windows 10 as well. Uh, I thought they had a version for Windows 7, but I might be wrong. But anyways, you would just download this, and I've already, I've already done that, so I'll save us the trouble. Um, and it comes up. Uh, like this, basically, you'll get uh, the scripts. So the scripts are really, really cool and slick. Uh, they allow you to quickly import them into your domain or your local policy for testing. Um, if you just want to import them, so say you don't want to use the scripts, you can go to the group policy object editor, 
and go grab, grab this backup and import it in. Um, they provide uh, what is set through the GPU reports. This is what that looks like. So you see what they're enforcing really quickly. Um, they also have a spreadsheet that shows you all the settings. And I, this policy rules file, I'm not, didn't do a lot of research for that. I, I thought that was for, for Intune, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, someone can correct me on that. But basically, um, so here's the script. Let's see if I can zoom into this. Yeah. So basically, you just, you just go and... Um, you want to load the baseline for the, a local install. So what it will do is it will read the policy and then it will just import all the registry keys. And that's it. Uh, it's there and the settings are there. Um, and you can go into the registry and see that, oh, wow, look at all those settings that just got applied, all right? And then you can also go into the policies tab here and you can see all the other settings that are applied as well. Uh, and it's actually showing that um, they don't want, according to Microsoft, they don't want anyone to be able to install extensions. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, look at that. Um, but you can set a, a policy, a group policy, to force, um, say, if you wanted um, URL short, shortened links uh, in there, you could force that to install. Um, uh, conversely, though, if, say, uh, your user wanted to go get Zoom, um, oops, sorry, sorry about your luck. <laughs> we don't support Zoom. <laughs> so um, I think that's all I wanted to show you guys. Do uh, you guys have any questions about what I was showing here? No questions. All right. So here's all the links to all the information I talked about. Uh, just click on all those if you're interested in digging in more on how policy works with uh, Legacy Edge and Edge and how those baselines work. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Chad.